1.7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. What exactly is the fear of the Lord? When you think fear, what comes to mind? Well, when it comes to fearing God, you shouldn't think fear in the same way a person fears snakes or heights or the mafia. Nah, the idea is more what you think when you're staring out into the vastness of the ocean or standing on the precipice of the Grand Canyon. To fear the Lord is to stand in awe before the reality of God. And therein lies the problem. In this sin-infected world we live in, the fear of the Lord is the exception, not the rule. Scripture teaches that the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, and that it's by the fear of the Lord that one turns away from evil. But it says in Romans 3.10 that none is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. And then it goes on to say in verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. In their paths of ruin and misery, in the way of peace they have not known. And what's the reason for that? What's the source of all the violence and the evil? Verse 18, there is no fear of God before their eyes. So all the evil in this world can be traced back to not fearing the Lord. And if the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, then not fearing the Lord must lead to death. And that's where we all stand. In the prophet Isaiah chapter 11, we find a prophecy about a savior to come. And it says in verse three that his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. That savior is none other than Jesus Christ, who lived a life of perfect obedience to God's law. Jesus feared God perfectly, and he died on the cross and rose from the grave to save his people from their sins so that all who trust in him can joyfully walk in the fear of the Lord forever. forever.